Futurecast showing we do have a little bit of cloud cover that increased marine layer along the coast, but most folks will see sunshine. It will dissipate early. We've got a nice northerly flow there right along the coast, that surface wind profile. Headlines for today, fog and clouds to start, especially along the coast and by the bay. Then a cooling trend begins and near seasonal for the first part of next week. Full forecast still ahead. Melissa, back over to you. And developing now in the East Bay, crews in Oakland dismantled a crane that was looming over the ruins of a devastating fire. Now, most of the people who were evacuated are able to go home this morning. That fire broke out early Friday morning at the complex under construction at 23rd and Valdez Streets. KPIX 5's Kate Nielsen has the latest. It took less than 30 seconds to bring down the towering crane. My apartment's actually level with the crane, and I was just saying, please don't go in my bedroom, please don't go in my bedroom. Robbie is one of hundreds of residents who lived in the 100 grand apartment building. It had been evacuated because it was in the collapse zone. Now he and all of his neighbors are back in their apartments. And ATF, ATF and Alameda County arson investigators will be back on the scene this morning looking for clues to try to figure out how this fire started. Friday's fire was the latest in a st string of fires that have had similar circumstances. There have been a total of five fires at four different construction sites in Emeryville and Oakland. KPIX 5 obtained this exclusive surveillance video of someone at the scene of one of the fires on May 13th. First, he hides behind an SUV, scoping out the building on San Pablo Avenue. Then he climbs the scaffolding and out of the view of the camera. And then later, he's back on the street, this time on a bicycle. Then he puts on gloves and a mask, and finally he walks away from the construction site as it goes up in flames. And the feds are offering a $50,000 reward for his capture. More exclusive new video this morning showing a police officer in Vallejo using a racial slur. KPX 5's Andrea Borba spoke with the man who caught it all on camera, but we want to warn you this morning, the story does contain offensive language. Leo Bruno was sitting in his Vallejo home near Sonoma Boulevard when he heard a commotion outside. I looked out the window and I saw some police approaching a white pickup truck, guns already drawn, um, some shouting going on. That's when Leo grabbed his cell phone and began recording this five minute video of two Vallejo police officers, one man, one woman, engaged in a stop with this white truck and its two occupants who had their hands outside the truck. 30 seconds in, Leo heard and recorded this. And then they proceeded to handcuff the occupants of the car, um, laid them on the ground, searched them. As the truck's occupants are searched, you can see the Vallejo PD logo on the cruiser. I thought it was potentially another shooting incident. Um, and I was nervous that the gun was going to go off and they were going to shoot the driver. Now, the Vallejo Police Department later released this statement. The Vallejo Police takes all reports of unprofessional behavior seriously and has no tolerance for such behavior. The chief of police has ordered an immediate investigation into this incident. And right now, firefighters are battling 13 active fires around the state, all the way from Oregon state line to Los Angeles. In Santa Barbara County, the Whittier Fire has burned 5,400 acres along Highway 154 and is forcing mandatory evacuations this morning. And in Butte County, firefighters are battling this fire burning southeast of Oroville. It started Friday afternoon and so far has torn through at least 10 homes and scorched 2,700 acres. Crazy. But the wind was shifting bad last night. It was going one way than the other. And so those poor firefighters, you know, they had their hands full. Right now, 500 homes are threatened. This morning, the fire is 20% contained. And the summer heat is also keeping Bay Area firefighters bu busy. This morning, crews are mopping up a 370-acre grass fire in Rodeo. It broke out yesterday afternoon near Interstate 80 and Willow Avenue. This morning, it is 90% contained. And in the South Bay, check out this wall of flames in San Jose. It was part of a 14-acre grass fire that sparked at Silver Creek Valley and Piercy Roads near Highway 101 yesterday. It was contained at around 7.30 last night. And in the Brentwood area, firefighters contained three separate fires on Marsh Creek Road, Deer Valley Road, and at Round Valley Regional Preserve. Our Jackie Ward was there and has more on the firefight. 
After July 4th, CAL FIRE expects their days to get more intense. But three fires starting back to back to back leads them to think that something is up. Very close to each other in proximity and time. Of course, that uh, is always somewhat suspicious, coincidental. We're looking into it. Uh, uh, it could be human caused intentional, it could be human caused accidental. At one point, CAL FIRE says 250 acres were on fire. Problem is the terrain. It's steep, it's oak woodland, um, there's limited access. There are some good roads into there as far as dirt roads and such we're able to drive on, but it's steep for our bulldozer to cut the line. 25 minutes away in Brentwood at the aquatic park, you can still smell the smoke from these fires. For the people who live here, they say they're used to it this time of year. Now you can actually see the smoke in the air. You can, when you see Diablo, you can see that haze there and you know there's a fire. But when it does happen, it's actually kind of scary because yeah. it's a lot of dry grass around here. Especially after the extra wet winter we had. Higher amounts of rain than normal means vegetation grew like it hasn't in years. So not only are fire crews combating more debris, they're also facing triple digit heat and extreme fatigue. Um, a lot of them are going on three to five hours of sleep. Um, we do have safety officers out that are taking a look at our firefighters. They're watching them perform, seeing and make sure they're still, uh, you know, doing what they need to be doing. In Clayton, Jackie Ward, KPIX 5. And the debate continues over plans to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act. Senator Dianne Feinstein discussed this issue in the Bay Area this week. Feinstein held an event at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital in San Francisco on Friday. She said the Affordable Care Act does need to be fixed. And if Republicans will stop trying to repeal it, the parties could work together to make the current system better. But she says that won't happen in a back room. We would sit down and collaborate. Um, I would find it very difficult to support any bill that did not have an open hearing. And she spoke about the Republican Senate health care proposal as she told the crowd that shrinking Medicaid hurts hospitals and that hurts everyone. And we have new video this morning of the power plant fire in Northridge that knocked out electricity to at least 140,000 homes. Residents reported hearing a loud bang around 7 o'clock last night when firefighters arrived. Up to 60,000 gallons of mineral oil were burning. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Two people aboard a small plane were injured following a crash into the waters off Southern California. Police say an ultralight aircraft crashed off Point Magoo Rock about 50 miles west of L.A. yesterday. Two nearby Good Samaritans tried to help bring the two passengers to safety, but one of the passengers later died and the other was taken to the hospital for minor injuries. And this morning, we're getting our first look at the aftermath of a fight that broke out in first class. It shows the chaos that was caused by an out-of-control passenger trying to open an exit door mid-air. Delta Flight 129 was bound for China Thursday, but it turned around and headed back to Seattle less than an hour into the flight. And as you can see there, debris are, is all over the floor of the plane. And this was after a brawl to keep him from opening the exit door. And some fellow passengers were part of that effort. A flight attendant reportedly had to smash wine bottles, multiple, on the man's head to subdue him. An East Bay woman is in jail this morning after investigators say she admitted to stabbing and killing her own parents and then trying to cover it up. Police say 50-year-old Monique LaShawn killed her parents inside their home. Their bodies discovered Friday. Police say they had been dead for a few days and that the crime scene had been staged to look like a fight. They also say the woman later confessed to killing them. So far, there's no word on the motive. And a pair of carjacking suspects are behind bars after a three-hour standoff in Vallejo. Police stopped a car last night matching the description from an armed carjacking in Napa County. Two men inside reportedly tried to run away. One allegedly aimed a gun at an officer who pulled his gun and then opened fire. No one was hit. A SWAT team later found the suspects hiding in a shed. The two men are in their 20s. They are in custody, both out of Napa County. And this weekend, a marijuana raid that found thousands of plants in the Santa Cruz Mountains ended in a shootout. An armed illegal marijuana grow was shot multiple times by officers and is recovering this morning. Officers say the grow operation caused a threat to wildlife. This particular grow here is on a uh, very sensitive uh, steelhead tributary, Soquel Creek. And no officers were hurt during the shooting.
And tomorrow, a federal judge will hold a hearing to decide the fate of the Oakland Police Department. The court has had oversight of the police department for more than a decade, but a recent report showed just how badly that department botched the investigation into officers accused of having sex with an underage prostitute. Now, the judge can hold public officials in contempt or fine them. The judge could also put the whole department into receivership, basically completely taking it over. The hearing is at 2.30 and will be one to watch. And in Napa, this coming Tuesday, the County Board of Supervisors will discuss recent grand jury reports. One report found that the Napa Juvenile Hall still does not have full useful camera coverage, despite three prior grand jury requests. Another report says that the Napa jail is dangerously understaffed with an officer vacancy rate of 25 percent. This week, the state Senate voted to raise taxes for people buying a home. Now, home buyers would pay between $75 and $225, and the money would help fund affordable housing. As a new tax, it needed a two-thirds majority vote, which it got right along party lines, with all Democrats in favor and all Republicans against. But not before some debate. But this isn't the only bill that we've done this with. Every year since I've been in the legislature, there's been a series of bills like this. And it's death by a thousand cuts. I'm telling you, people are adults in the state, and they will welcome these investments in their community, and they will be thankful for our efforts to provide more affordable housing in the community. Now, the new tax bill still has to pass the assembly and be signed by the governor. It would take effect January 1st, 2018.